Congress there. Um, welcome to the Environmental Review Board meeting, the 15th, 2019. Uh, first order of business is the application on the Barg residence, 931 Hard Scrabble Road. Hi. Hi. So I'm Renee Byers, the Barg's landscape architect, and this is Paul Janik, who is our wetlands consultant, and Steve Silverberg. The Bargs can't be here as an uh, attorney representing them. So I'll run through the project. Sure. I'll see what your format is, and then we can. Have you all been to the site? Mm, I think we were there years ago. Years ago. Yeah. They built a garage or something? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Good memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was yeah. some time ago. Like me. Ten years ago, maybe? Right. Photos, so. so, yeah, you know what? That I think, Paul, that's a good idea. But I'm going to show you the plan that we, we also submitted. I didn't know how that's, that, well. <laughs> that's that garage, right? Now you remember this little orange orange garage right there. Yeah. I'm going to pass these around if you like. Um, so the site is a couple of acres. Um, it is depicted in a small version on the on your cover sheet. Yeah. Would you like to put it up on this? Um, that help you? Or that I think that this would probably the be better. I think the table's better. Yeah, okay. I think that they yeah, okay. can be right here and look at all oh, our okay. millions of numbers. Yeah. This is a existing. This is proposed. Same scale in terms of the size. So we have. Um, the DEC wetland setback, um, we plotted the, both the 50 and the 100 foot setback. The town wetland setback diverges a little bit from, this is the DEC 100 foot wet uh, setback, and the town uh, nips in here a little bit, right here in front of the garage. So this being the only non-wetland buffer part of the site is this zone around the existing garage. There's a, a stream along here, and all of this is all, all wetland. So this is what we're left to work with. They have a um, septic field right here existing. Driveway comes in off of hard gravel like this, sweep around here. This is um, almost all lawn right now, with the exception of this uh, rock outcrop area. There are some sort of woodland-ish um, trees and around the perimeter, um, but essentially it's the site's been developed. And on the house side, um, there was a major, in addition to the garage going in, there was another major renovation a while back, in addition here, and a, a very large um, patio structure built cantilevered up and out over this, this side. There are lots of retaining walls, steps, some house utilities over on this side. So. Uh, the Bargs are interested in a swimming pool and a separate spa. They'd like to keep their spa open uh, later in the year, so they want to separate the two. The existing garage, when it was approved, has a, a basement space. This is the ba basement exit. And that was approved for a changing room sort of cabana function. So that has not been built out, but it's ready it's ready to go once you know, they put in the pool. Um, this is especially important because you have to cross the driveway to get to the, the only area where a pool can go on this site. So we obviously looked at all possible alternatives, and this was the only area. Um, there was an application um, submitted uh, a couple years ago that received um, it didn't come before you, but it did receive Steve's okay, and that's here. So we've done a thorough analysis of this. This project tried to fit the pool and spa all within this one allowable area, but it was cramped, unworkable, a very small pool, structurally next to impossible to construct because it was so close to the foundation of the existing garage, and there was a beautiful tree there. It would have had to come out. Um, didn't give them a separate spa, and getting over here was just, I mean, it's just too expensive to build something so unworkable. There was really no point. And this pool, only 16 by 34, is pretty tiny for swimming. This did, however, as I said, receive approval. There was quite a lot of disturbance, around 2,400 square feet in the buffer. No mitigation was proposed. 
um, and Ortonor was required in the permit, and then they had a large bank of uh, was it actually drainage. permitted, or just yes. it was permitted? The, the only disturbance was in the buffer it was for the stormwater facilities. Right. I so the, shade, the, the, the shaded area in red is outside of the buffer. Correct. Any Correct. buffer. Any buffer. Town or state. Right. No buffer. That's our only that yep. little triangle. No, that's that's it. why I didn't. That's why it was not. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. So that's what we were left with, um, and as I said, they just this. All these retaining walls, all the disturbance, all the tearing up, all the, you know, and we're also, of course, constrained by the distance to the septic field. So, after a lot of study, we came up with, you know, blowing the scale up, okay, moving up to one to ten feet. Here's our famous triangle. Okay? This is the, the one sacred spot. Um, to stay farther from the septic, uh, save the tree, which is here, uh, give them a separate spa, and try to keep the minimum encroachment into the wetland that has not ever been encroached on. We came up with this configuration. So we have 215 square feet of hardscape, which is beyond the buffer. Rather than propose a bunch of infiltrators, we were able to design a beautiful rain garden with all kinds of mitigation planting that does serves the same function and then at the same time gets rid of a lot of lawn. Um, we've kept the whole design super simple. We're uh, moving the driveway over a few feet in order, again, that was a whole effort to keep this as pulled back as far as we could. This would not be possible without moving the driveway a few feet to to even give them this much, you know, complete, uh, this much room to circulate. Um, this area as well, of course, is in a buffer, but the wetland that it's protecting is so already encroached upon by the existing by the house itself, by the driveway. That this was our main focus to try to preserve and then improve this whole this whole part of the buffer. So that wetland is off the off the map, off the yeah. map this mm -hmm. way yeah. on the other side of the house. That's correct. It's right here. So scaling back down, mm -hmm. there's your pool. Mm -hmm. Here's the house. Here's the and here's this wetland. Right. So there's your yeah. for the board's yeah. information the the where then the source is uh, Turner Swamp, which is right on the Hearts Gravel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have the stream system that feeds and goes on the other side of the driveway. You know, it emanates from there, and then that works its way all the way down to the duck pond and then into the sawmill. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, we did uh, some cross sections to kind of help sort of explain what we're doing. I, I these are just kind of keep you know, going on. Uh, we're trying to maintain the grade as much as possible. We're trying to stay um, trying to stay below the level of the leach field. That way we can be closer to it. Uh, we're trying to have, of course, a good relationship with the building that was intended for the pool house. So that's the other thing. We need to have good circulation to get down to the only doors that are available to, to us. Um, we did a the modifications that you were talking about to that outbuilding. The we don't have to. Oh, well, interior. The, it's the, all interior. It's all changing. interior. There will be. At, they did provide for, which is great. Uh, they provided that for the pool equipment to be in that building, so we don't even have to have a separate pad or anything for that, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, it'll have to be vented properly, of course, right. but it can all be. Um, so we did. And a pretty extensive uh, replanting in hopes of mitigating our tiny encroachment. Um, we have over 5,300 square feet of new plantings. They're all sort of listed in detail here. I don't want to take up the whole night explaining all this, but uh, I feel like we did a pretty good job of it. It's my 37 years of landscape architect, so I'm, I'm new to you guys, but I've been working at this a while. So, um, have a please, and inconveniently, we just didn't have room for the, the keys on the next place. But I can, I can tell you about some of the stuff. We have a lot of 
ferns and grasses in here. We have um, a number of new trees, and we really are concerned the whole the whole area that we want to protect. Right, is this whole wetland? So we we made some major um, improvements over here with taking out mowed lawn. There's just so much, and we did a lot over here because there's a lot of runoff coming off the driveway, so we have a big swath here, and then we came all along here and all along the entry and really tried to change the character. Of course, here we made a big buffer. We kept this part just a little bit open so you can get that beautiful view when you come down here looking straight out. But then uh, here we have the, the rain garden, which borders this big rock outcrop. So it'll be quite a lovely setting with the rocks rising up here and a beautiful existing tree here forming the edge, and then we're able to get all our planting in there. So we're pretty proud of the resolution and feel that, um, given all the parameters, it's a pretty minor thing. We also, uh, Paul's idea, which was a good one, we went ahead, because we wanted to make this rain garden in that particular location, we went ahead and received our DEC wetlands permit. So we've already, they've already signed off and we're okay to go. How much lawn are you reclaiming? Okay, let me just, I gotta flip back to my numbers here. I'm gonna flip this around, sorry. Mm -hmm. We are taking 20, we're getting through 28% uh, of the lawn to take them back. So square footage. Area of mitigation planting, replacing lawn in 100 foot town well and setback, 5,324 square feet. This is the spot. And our, um, our total hardscape is, which is in this gray, is 500 and change. This little part is 215. So when we say disturbance, that we're disturbing 2,400 feet, that, that includes, that's because we're making a rain garden and everything else. So disturbed is, you know, it's you're, you're, you're improving. Reclaiming yeah, we're reclaiming, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. and, of the, and of the hardscape to ter disturbance, only 215 feet. It's on this side. Yeah, so on correct. The operative. The operative, yeah. right. The, 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 the yeah. Yeah. Side. But this side is totally been... So the pictures will show. I mean, it's been totally suburbanized, and it's just a big, yeah, it's a big one. So it'll definitely What's the area of that? improve all of our seven. 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 With the concept that the first thing we want to do is try to not go outside of the buffer, right? This is all being rebuilt as part of this project? Correct. Well, so not all of it. There is one, uh, it's minor, but there is a tiny bit of wall here. Okay. The, the, right now, these steps, there are existing steps. They're almost like that, but they're at kind of a weird angle and they don't end up at the same place. But there are, that's how mm -hmm. you get from the house down to that area. Mm -hmm. but, so yes, we are making a but, more, But concept-wise, if the intent is to try to stay within the code, yes. to move the pool up, move the spot in. Yeah, oh, we looked at, so I submitted as part of your packet, I was hoping you had a chance to look. They're, they're really, so the only, you have, we have the previous application, right, that did that. Right. Here it is. The, the approved one. Yeah. Right. So here it is. Here's what it's like when you try to fit it in. There's no room for a spa. There's no way to get, they don't even provide well, a way to get down there. Well, um, there, there, I mean, there, would, there would be if you, you don't need this much deck necessarily, if you, well, even if the, even if you don't do a deck, you have lawn. Where do you sit? And the other thing is that this this is super super tight to this foundation. You can't. This what's, is unbuildable. What's all of, what's all of this area? Well, they they used it for a retaining wall. Yeah. Well, no doubt that but it's you not can't, as, it's you not can't as make, gracious as, yeah. as you're there's, showing. There's really no. I mean, and, and what's the and to what end? You know. You well, know, there's, that there's, is, there's that the code. Is, uh, it says yeah. don't go outside the lines. 
and there is a way to do it. And I haven't had the opportunity to look at any of the stuff, but my first question would be, how can one solve Right. Well, the other or, thing... Or provide a solution that gives them something we, within the lines. Right. We tried to look at... Um, we have. We did do a study of turning it the other way, but that's where we ran into the same these issues again. Hang on. Well, Renee is looking, I think, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the legal issues um, is the fact that while the disturbance is... A, a little over 200 feet, you're getting 5,000 square feet of mitigation, uh, which you wouldn't be getting if they didn't do that little bit of encroachment, and that improves issues related to runoff and so forth because you're eliminating a lot of lawn and putting in a lot of rain garden, which which absorbs the runoff and so forth. So it's really at the end of the day, net, it's an improvement as far as the impacts on the wetlands. Except, I'm not sure I agree with the right, concept, right. but... Mm -hmm. uh, well, but that's in a code. the code. Well, it's not the way, but it's not actually, to be fair. I mean, the way the code, the ordinance works, mm -hmm. is before you can even get to the question of mitigation, we would have to be satisfied that there is no alternative to do the proposal within with, within an area mm -hmm. that doesn't violate the buffer. Maybe it's and that, you know, maybe it's let me, let me sure, sure. So that's, that's one test. The other test relates to the kind of disturbance that's being proposed. Mm -hmm. And this board, like many, has taken a position over the years that there's a different analysis that's applied when you're dealing with something like a swimming pool as opposed to a proposed addition onto a house that would allow a three-bedroom house to accommodate a growing family in an area where houses were built in a grandfathered area, for instance. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's just a different approach to these kinds of applications. With, re with respect, and there's nothing in the code that makes that distinction. And we provided tonight, well, uh, if, if I may, if we provided tonight, uh, we made some FOIL requests, and there are a number of cases where you granted approvals to significantly more disturbance than we're proposing here. What kinds of structures? Uh, I think. This is, this but, but let me, before we go to that, can I show you my own? Just, just to help you, help you through that. This was just a minute tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we just, because it took a long time. Let me, finish, let me finish this about what we looked at, because it's, it's a totally fair question, and it's one that actually Steve prepped me for, you know, be prepared to show, you know, how you, how you got here and why nothing else works. So let me show you. This is, so we took, well, we, we simply, there was just no way to fit in any usable area the spa, a separate spa within that zone. It just you have to you have to get down to this. This is the entry to the uh, cabana or pool house, whatever you want to call it. So and you know we need to get you up those steps. So all that is not a problem. That's all. Uh, th th these steps are already there, and this is not within your buffer. So, but then when we flip the pool the other way, the problem becomes we're too close to the septic tank. We can't fit. So we also have much greater slopes. So this, the, the pretty plan doesn't really indicate, but uh, because we're not showing every bit of grading, but when we turn the pool this way, this leaves a 17% slope this way and a 14% slope this way, right down you know, to the septic. So that's, that's no good. So I really did try Would you integrate the spa with the pool, and you don't insist on a separate spa? Well, we can't do that because that's one of their criteria. Mr. Bark has some back issues, and they really want to be able to use it later in the year. But either way... Okay, they've the, lived for a long time without a pool on this property, yeah, of right? Of course. It, that, that's correct. So, so but they're, they're looking to do something yes. in a regulated area. We know what they would like to have, but if 
may be a situation where they can't get everything that they want and with us trying to work with you to minimize whatever kind of disturbance there is, one may one may have to sacrifice a little bit of the right. design. Right, so, but if I may, so let me, let me explain this. So it's, but let's think about that. Think carefully about what you're saying, but it's just, it, believe me, I have worked on this a long time to try to, uh, of course I would like nothing more to do than to do what you're saying, but listen, if you'll hear me out here. Um, it, so here we have the same pool flip the other direction. So it doesn't really, you know, wherever I move it, so I was able to stay out of this side, but I'm still in this side. So this separate spa is not in the more sacred zone over on this side. It's already tucked away up to the driveway. This already involves, move, we're moving a driveway over to try to make this work. So we've really, really done our, our homework here. And these slopes, this plan is not workable. So then it comes really back Again, to... I, I don't understand. I'm a lawyer. Yes. He's an engineer. Okay. So explain to David... What well, not saying workable, was workable versus what the client would mostly prefer. I can't know. It's not, a, it's not the client's choice how, what the rules are for the setback from the septic tank. Mm -hmm. I can't change that. Right. We need to be 20 feet. We're only 17 feet if we do right. this. But there I can't, are, I can't oh, change, but, 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 I can't change excuse the, me, one the second. underpinning here. If yes. you stay with that one criteria, yes. is there a design solution that would meet the code requirement for setback? Yes, okay. it's the previous plan. Fine. So there is a but, solution. But, but it's not, but the pool is so small okay. but as to not be worth building. And that's, well, that's the client's decision. Whether a pool of X size is acceptable or Y size is not acceptable. All we're saying is within the criteria, there are solutions. Well, let, let me back up. That other, the other plan that was submitted on paper met past muster through Steve, but it did not um, it did not take into account the structural foundation of this building. It was far too close to it. So that you would have had to underpin this entire building in order to get that pool as close as the previous architects had. But there had. is a design solution. It just requires a little more work. You're moving the driveway, you're adding walls, you're adding a lot of things. Yeah, but then to, it just adds one more level of, oh, so but, I think but I But there back is a design solution, it just is not a well, preferred I solution. Think, I, th I guess I think that but If I could just kind of, interject yeah, though, I mean, I, that what you're saying is you're, what you're saying, but um, I think you have to, you know, look at the forest a little more. The product you're going to get with this design. And that's important. I've been on one of these boards myself okay. for years. It's, a, it's important. And it's a but scale. But that's not, but every that's not the way the analysis every, works. Every site's a little different. Every site's got its constraints. Mm -hmm. You're asking a client when they come in, or an applicant to come when they come in, to do the best they can to do their due diligence, and you're charged with asking them to do that. But it's, it is a scale, too. It's not a nice, neat formula all the time. It's a scale, and when impacts tip something negatively, when a project's completed, if in fact it can be tipped more positively at the end of the day, that's something that benefits the site, and in, most importantly, the thing that you're charged with protecting, which is water courses and wetlands. I remember having to deal with things just like that, and it's a, it's a scale. It's never one and one is two all the time. And you're also charged with looking at precedences. You have to be very careful when you give you know, approvals to things based on previous. I remember having to do just the same sort of thing. But I will say, there's a lot of positive benefits to this project. And most particularly is the fact that there's a lot less hardscape that's being needed to be installed. And there's a lot more landscaping of a native type and replacement of lawns, which clearly is going to be benefiting so, the water courses and wetlands. So I, so I think that's, I, I, I don't think you can just look at it as one and one as two. I, you have to look at it more like a, a, a scale I, yeah. and, and the net result. I agree. And, that, and on that scale note, I think we should run through these, and I brought the full size drawings of the other approved projects, which are on this chart, that make a comparison with ours. So, 
This yes, is sir. information they haven't seen. Because we, because the mm -hmm. FOIA request right. took weeks and weeks mm -hmm. and weeks. Yes. But they're they're projects that. But they're pro that they're you've approved. you've they, seen them because you yeah. you have approved them. You but approved it hasn't them. been submitted until tonight. The, your letter. Because so, we just got so it. So it's right. up to the board whether you want to entertain it tonight yeah. or. Well, well, I mean, they're, 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 he, they're here yeah, if they want to run through it. And I, I feel like my sense is we're not going to make a decision tonight. Um, at the very least, I think that this is going to warrant a second visit. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, you know, I certainly would have preferred if it was going to have this kind of analysis and we're going to be nice to see it in advance. But Believe me, we tried as I'm, soon I'm to not, get no these blame. drawings no, as soon no, as we no could. Blame. Yeah. No blame. <laughs> no blame. So why don't you go through it? it took months. I'm not sure how much, how much of it we will be able to absorb hearing it okay. for the first time here. But it, it, it's all written out. So that it's all written out. Yeah, we're, so, happy. Yeah. we're happy so, to take a look. Um, one of the most significant ones is uh, this project, which is right on top, 87 Stephen Road. That's yep. So that's a two and a half acre site. Oh, I remember this. It comprised a two story house mm -hmm. addition, a shed, extensive retaining walls and steps, over 300 linear feet of trenching to a 2,700 mm -hmm. square foot rain garden mitigation and new hardscape, including wall steps in the building. Yep. Now, it does seem to me that there probably would have been, uh, you know, they, they could put their house in a different way, maybe they didn't need this, maybe they didn't need to have all those steps. There's probably a lot they could have done. But anyway, they did a nice job with, they, they have 9,000 square feet of disturbance. We have 3,800. They proposed a mitigation planting area Fairly, quite generous, 18,000 square feet. Um, but it's a, this is this whole house was built into. Uh, so this is a you know an, an enormous enormous disturbance there. Um, we have um, now another plan. Maybe Steve can fill us in. There was no plan available when we did the FOIA request. I don't know why. This is 34 Hollow Oak Road that received a wetlands permit number 2016-0003. That included an above-ground pool um, that was in the buffer, uh, 198 square feet. And yeah, I can explain the other disturbance was a stream disturbance. Yeah, landscaping, right. fencing, and a patio construction. But the disturbance was for stream restoration. The total renovation of the stream. In the, right. In the air. I, so what we have is, but there was a three thousand. Okay, so what made this all here? Three, as a as a percentage of the site, I just wanted to explain. Hold on, we're just trying to catch on up this, to. Right. We're I don't to, have again, trying to re yeah, refresh our recollections sure. about this project. Again, there was no plan available for 34 Hollow Oak Road, but there was a 3,000 square foot disturbance in the buffer for whatever, including this uh, patio and uh, swimming pool. So they did not ground. have to come before the board. Right. No, they oh, did they, not come before It never came before us? No. No, oh, okay. no, no, no it's a stream restoration project. That's where okay. the, you know, right. the majority of the disturbance occurred. And then this did come before the board. It says it didn't. It no, said it, it was, did. it did not, it said no ERV review. No, it was the it's a permit issued by hmm? Eskom and no was the one where the, the handicapped child, and yeah, they made this small pool. This one last year? In the, yeah, that was the ridge? That was, yeah. that's, it was, it was, it was, I thought that was in the ridge, yeah. not Hollow Oak. Yeah. Oh, it's Hollow Oak? 34 Hollow Oak. Which is right next to the ridge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. There's the severely handicapped child. Yes, yes. The majority of disturbance was due to restoring the stream channel. Right, those two components. Yeah, no right. and but the majority, the majority of our disturbance is to restore, is to take lawn away. Our only real disturbance, mm -hmm. hardscape disturbance, is 200 feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. well. Which is the only thing that you're getting any pushback on. Right, right. right. From right. The, exactly. Yeah. So, and, I, uh, and I believe that the, didn't we insist that the patio be yeah, permeable? Be permeable, permeable yeah. Yeah. and so, non paved? So, nevertheless, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, but, but you know, I do want you to think you're about pointing, this. You're pointing out precedents, yes. and, you know, they. Yeah. For precedent to be uh, useful, it, 
you have to be able to relate it. The and there are, right, and, but the and there are so distinctions, you, and there are distinctions. 100%. But that's, to, that's your job to be able to sort of. Well, that's right. I mean, for instance, just looking at the Shelley Road project, the all of the disturbance was on the other side of the house from the wetland. So the real impact on the wetland was probably negligible, if, if any, at all. Right. The most okay. real impact so, of this and, and what's the impact on our 200 feet? Excuse me. What, what is, that's it, it, excuse me. Yeah. The other distinction is I don't see a swimming pool here. This was, as I mentioned when I was articulating the way we interpret the ordinance, this was for a an addition in order to accommodate a growing family in a house that was severely site constrained. And uh, the I think that the mitigation that we insisted on, even in this context, was more than generous given the realities of the site. I think that we got a very good deal for ourselves in terms of the amount of mitigation that was required here. And so for um, us, proposing 10 times the mitigation well, for that little... T again, as I, said, okay. as, as I said when I first articulated yes. the analysis, is you have to be able to get to the point in the analysis where mitigation is appropriate. And that's after you have shown that there is no workable alternative to doing work that impinges into the buffer. And I don't think we're there yet on this, on this project. So. Um, Are there others? Where, uh, well, yes, I, I, these were the most significant. The other mm -hmm. one is uh, Nine Dawn and Lane. Um, and that was the installation of new stormwater dry wells. And, and so I did want to talk a little bit about dry wells. Maybe you can help me with that. In conjunction with installation, there was a new in-ground pool, but the pool was outside the buffer. We haven't done anything on Dawn and Lane. The block residence. Uh, again, it said no, no ERB review. It said just from Mr. Oh, Holman. Okay. Um, so, and that had 871 square feet of disturbance within the buffer. So one of the things that I'm scratching my head about is in our case, um, the prior permit that was issued had a wetland dis disturbance of 2,431 square feet. It was all being dug up in order to put in infiltrators with grass on top. So I do not understand why that doesn't require your review and why that is considered not a disturbance to the wetland. You're putting grass right on top. There's apples if, to if apples. If you're talking about your previous application yes. that Steve reviewed, yes. uh, we can't talk to that. We haven't as seen a, that. As a general policy guideline, stormwater practices are usually permitted within buffer areas. So I didn't see that. Is that in the, did you, is that in the written in the? I, I, I didn't. Did, I did, I, we didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't see that. As, but the net effect, if we're, and we have our, that's why we, I brought Paul along, the net disturbance to the wetland, that's what we're trying to preserve and protect, is so much greater to dig up and put in a whole bank of infiltrators, as opposed to building a wonderful wetland garden. So I, yeah, I'm trying to, I don't, so I don't the, quite The objection is into the wetland garden. That's not, I don't think we're, we're, the, the concern it's the pool. The concern is that is, well, is, is it, the wetland garden is part of a mitigation, we made it a which not to, I, so I agree it right. on its face. It looks like a nice yeah. mitigation plan, both in terms of the design but of it, the function of it, as well as the proportion of it to yeah. the disturbance. The concern that Jonathan is raising, and I, and I understand, is that before we can analyze the mitigation and pass on that, we first have to be satisfied that there that the applicant has exhausted the analysis about whether or not you can do this without running a foul. So, of the I, think, I, right. so that's I think the, what I've, yeah. I think the, the issue here, and I can talk about it a little more, but I think the issue here is that what you're essentially telling us is that they could do something that has more disturbance without having to get an approval from you, the one that was approved previously, that is something that they don't really want to do for the various reasons that have been articulated and here. And the town gets no. And 
uh, and it's not workable for them, yet you'd rather, it sounds like, send us away and say you're not going to approve this proposal, which is less disturbance overall and more mitigation, which really is the purpose, because if you look at 137B, uh, B, uh, 1B, it talks about the intent, and the intent is preventing and minimizing erosion and so forth. We're providing here uh, additional mitigation that you would not be getting the other way uh, with something that would not need your approval. And it's, it seems to me that even if we haven't convinced you that, that, that this is really the only workable thing, and we believe it is, and Renee can discuss it a little bit more, that you're still undertaking and uh, obtaining the intent of the code by allowing this because it provides for more mitigation and less disturbance than what would be permitted otherwise. I, I, you, you lost me halfway through, but... Well, then I'm doing my job. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I confused you. All right. Um, you know, each of these examples that you guys are bringing up as precedent are for us, you know, issues going forward with every new applicant. So we, every time that we, if we were to listen to your argument here and say, well, let's forget about whether or not there's a way to do it within the code, look, it's a good deal overall, then that creates a precedent going forward that, well, these, you didn't look at the code this time around. So if it is our practice, either because it's specifically drawn out in the code or because it's the way we do it, to make a condition precedent that you first show us that you can't do it within the code, that's, there's a reason for that. You know, whether or not it may make sense in, you know, it's, it, again, it's a forest trees issue. Maybe just for your plan, you might say, oh, well, why bother looking at it because overall we're better off this way. For us to function effectively as a board and maintain the environmental law throughout the municipality, we have to be able to have, uh, you know, a, a body of work that's consistent and that we can rely but on. But again, I think Renee can address the issue. Well, I think why. the fundamental thing too, which has guided the board, you know, for years, is they follow kind of the federal standards of compensatory mitigation, and the first step is avoidance. You know, look at whether you can do something that doesn't require encroachment within the buffer area. Which is why the ordinance was drafted the way it Yeah, is. and then the second step is once that's been exhausted, as, as has been mentioned, is then look at how you minimize that. And I think you've, you've, your plan is right, you've, moving you've, you've, in that direction. You've done step two nicely. Yeah. We've just got to hit step one. Right. Right. One, so, of the issues, you know, one of the issues is, especially when you're dealing with something like this, they're, they're really... Um, Nobody necessarily has a right to a swimming pool. Um, I don't think any zoning law will, any concept of buildable lots, any concept of what other restrictions zoning laws are placed. You know, when you're dealing with a house in a residential area, there are certain rights, certain perquisites that come with ownership of a house that you expect that any homeowner expects that they are going to be able to do on their property. A pool is an amenity. A pool is an extra. There's no vested right, especially in this circumstance, this kind of geographical location. There's no vested right to have a swimming pool. Um, and so, boards like ours are entitled, and they required, to look at swimming pools differently than we look at other kinds of applications for different kinds of structures being proposed for buffer areas. Um, you know, and some people don't want to hear that. Some people don't want to hear you know, that they don't have a right to put a swimming pool in their house wherever they want to. Um, you know, I own the property, I should be able to do what I want with it, where I want to do it. But you know, there are limitations that the legislature, in this case the town council, has you know, seen fit to put in. Do you want to address the issue? Yeah, and then you'll speak to this, what yes. you just said. Okay. 
Um, so let me just go back to our alternative because I did try very hard to do this. Um, I've explained, I, I don't know how much more I can, how many more times I can explain it, but that the foundation of the garage, we don't want to compromise. We want to keep the walls in there close to, very close to the existing location that they're in. So that's step one. That's our one constraint. The other, we have a septic field over here. Okay? Then we have a pool that's not a big pool, 18 feet wide, 41 feet long. There are only so many square feet, and I, you can go well, out there, to the right, side. You say you say it's not a big pool. I mean, there there are plenty of swimming pools, you know, in this county and in the town that are much mm -hmm. smaller than that. But making it shorter doesn't it's solve my problem. I still don't have any. It just like well, if you make it small, if you make it shorter, and you incorporate the spa into the pool, then we can't have it open. Then it, then it can't be open. That, that that's well, as it, I said. It can't what? I but can't, the spa, I don't, I don't. the spa is not your issue. Look at the well, look, look, look at the pool. Look at the plan. Where would you? Eighteen by forty-one. Yes. It's substantially larger than this room. The normal pool, a normal swimming pool, is twenty by forty. That's the sort of standard. Okay, so here we go. See, here's the spa over here. Yeah. What happens so putting it in there. Turn the pool and incorporate the spa into the it, pool. What happens? That, look, that's this. So even if I put the spa. Well, a second because there's two different meetings going on. Yeah. Let me show you what happens here. Here's the problem. The pool cannot go any closer to this garage. Let me finish. Cannot go any closer to this garage because you can't get around it. This pool at this length. Can I ask you, when you say you can't get around it, because it's not as gracious as one would like? Well, you need at least code? six feet to go around. I mean, you can't, it, it, when you're going to fall in the pool, it's a safety issue. Is, is there issue. a code? Is there a, a no, there's no code, but it's just well, a standard, standard practice. Well, you're making a statement. We're just asking, we're asking questions of I understand. statements you're making. So here, so even if I put this, so this spa, I move it over in here. That doesn't change the location of the pool. And I still am too close to the end. So if I I'm, if I put when this you say spot, you're too close to the end. to the uh, septic tank. Okay. Where is where is does, does it red. show on the on any of the plans where the septic the septic right. yeah right there yeah it's all there there's the leach field. and there's the so that would drive a smaller and you can pool twenty seven. feet so that would drive a smaller yes. pool to make code. Um, a far smaller, because look where the lines are. Can you see where your wet line line no, is? No, but if you tell so me it has to, to be smaller, I believe you. I'm yeah. trying to envision where the, where the septic line would be here. Mm -hmm. The septic line comes from the house. It, the, the, it's, the, it's a state health code okay, that so the 20 foot setback. 20 feet setback from the house? No, from the, the tank. Yeah. From the tank. Yeah, those yes. are the fields. Right. right. So, so, 20, so 20 feet in any direction from, from this, your from this, this, from this corner. corner. Right. Right. Yeah. So which, takes us, which takes us where? Where is right. 20 feet from right. here? Right here. So that's kind of a wide. Right in here. Is there a uh, scale on this? It's very, yeah. it's very a, similar to. It's up. Scale. And then, uh, uh, what, are we, what are we using? 10 scale? This, this is you said? 10 scale. And then 10? Yeah. All right, so it's going to be two inches off the corner here. So it's going to be. Yes. Okay. So you got two. So it doesn't take you any. So, so you, it's pretty still, much up to the line, right? Yeah, it's the wet right. line, which is probably how it's got sighted in the first place. So that because of this line, you right. see here. Here right. it is at so. 17 foot three. You can see that if I move this over, this is thirty <coughs> scale. Can I have that, please? Mm -hmm. So if I move this up, So my 20 foot line is here. I mean, it's hard on such a small scale drawing. But then I have to move, because of the shape of the, I have to come all the way up to here with the pool. Now I've, all, and, and put this thing in here. Again, you're, you're talking about more of a plunge pool. This is not a pool that you can swim laps in. You can't really swim in a, such in a 30 foot uh, pool. And you still have all kinds of grading, all kind, there, there is still impact to the wetlands. Have, have you tried? I tried. Yeah, on the angle? <laughs> yeah. How did that work out? Oh, the angle? Yeah. No, that doesn't. But it, and it can't. It, again, th then you're, let me here, I have some tracing paper. Um, Okay. 
watching. Mm -hmm. Watching though. Mm -hmm. Here's the limit line. Okay, I'm, I'm falling in the steps. Right, right. Where's the house? You know, I'm still over the line. I could go. I still can't do it. Make it a little shorter. I mean, this is what is you said. Twenty by forty is standard. No. This is already. This is what this your is, length this, is. Forty. This is twenty. This is forty-one. This is one foot longer than forty. Okay. okay. So you make it. What happens if you bring it in five feet? And then and turn, and turn it, it sideways, and then, turn and then it have your steps come down into the corner right. of the pool. Or move the steps to another location. Move the steps. But the steps, that's how you, they, they are right across from the steps across the way. But well, there is a design can, solution, it's just can. not this design but solution. that's right. like, well then why didn't you tell the, the people that are building the houses, why don't you uh, build well, on the other well, house? There are you. architectural we're not, reasons. We're talking with you folks. Yeah, but I also think that you had, you had a situation where despite the stream, um, the stream. Why don't we stay with the plan? No, I just, wanted, I just wanted to talk about that because they were able to, to build an impervious surface of 198 square feet. Please, please. With, all, with, yeah. with, this is with all going the wrong direction. With all due respect, we yeah. have we've said to you that the nature of the structure being proposed is a very important component of the analysis. And I don't think that these precedents that you've brought up, since they don't involve Proposing an in-ground swimming pool are necessarily as relevant as you guys might like them to be. Well, I think the question becomes, so, you know, how much? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, no, 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 no. So just, you know, to come back to us with precedents that don't involve. I mean, we're sitting here trying to analyze. No, you're trying to figure out a way. I know. How you can do what you want? You know, you're not asking for an addition to the house. No. Um, you're asking for a swimming pool. So we're trying to see or whether what there's it, a way to, to, to work it out. Or what if it wasn't rectilinear, the pool? Well, they really want an automatic cover for safety. And so that's not possible on a freeform pool? The only way to do that is if, if you have a freeform, then you have to have a pool deck. So if you have a pool that goes like that, mm -hmm. say, you, can ha you have to have tracks in a pool deck, and then it's, you know, it's pretty god awful, then that thing has to go across. But that, again, so, so in effect, you still have a disturbing rectangle that gets in your way. So it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a balance of many, many factors mm -hmm. that led us to this point. And it was simply our feeling that since the code doesn't uh, state that there is any, that, that it seems like your mandate is to look at the effect of the act, not what the act is, but I'll let Steve talk to that. And so it was our position that they were allowed to build a, a garage that has a, a pool facility underneath uh, with the idea that they would be granted at some point when they, when budget allowed to build a swimming pool. So many and they were, and they were, so and Steve and, permitted it. Yes. A pool that the could, fact that, that it's not the built. pool that they want is right. and it's very is small, not our issue. I mean, I, I think the I think the spot. assumption was at the time, and I it, it was a long time ago, at least ten years, right? Um, I think the assumption was that if you came back for a pool, it was going to be a pool that uh, that complied, mm -hmm. which it did at the time. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, so it'd be useful if Renee could come back with some, uh, perhaps a cross section of, of the uh, previously approved. Yeah. Well, again, remember this is the first that we're even hearing as a board of the previous oh. approved application. So. Well, except um, I submitted these plans like eight weeks ago, and then that and that application was in there. Well, how about? Okay. An L-shaped pool that allows a lap lane for swimming laps. You could probably, going this way, get 40 feet or close to it and stay within the, the restricted space. Well, an L-shaped pool would, I mean, a skinny part and a, and a straight part, mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Um, Unconventional. It would require two separate 
uh, mechanisms for the pool cover going two separate directions. Um, I think it's a completely out of character with the house and the grounds and the simplicity, and it's it's going through some incredible machinations to avoid to avoid. If you if you stand out at this site, we went out and um, I did this weeks ago and let Steve know in case you guys wanted to visit the site before the meeting. Um, I staked out where this line falls, mm -hmm. and when you stand out there now, you're standing in, out on this big massive lawn, and there's this little corner, and it's and then there's all this wet area way down here, and it just defies reason why a simple pool where the owners are willing to go to enormous expense to keep it as close as they can to make it work for everyone and put in all of the thousands and so the trees and the thir ferns the and the, all those things and I and I know and I know what you're saying you have to feel that it doesn't fit so we tried within practical ways to fit it in but these these L shapes, it, it's really, it's like, I don't know at what point the board would tell a homeowner to like look at these other configurations of the house. I mean, there is a certain point where a registered professional like myself does have, is often given the responsibility of saying, and we, you know, certify on oath, we're here to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our clients, that is what a registered landscape architect does, that there is no practical alternative taking into all the accounts, all the different factors of the environment and the client's needs and the, the, your statute that you're trying to protect and the wetlands and trying to make the best improvement. We feel that we've met all those criteria and we did spend a lot of time, I had an initial meeting with Steve who asked me to look at this alternative, flipping the pool this way. I did it, I showed why it doesn't work. So that's, that's kind of where we are. And, um, was there something else that we can show you that we haven't shown you? Um, not that I can think of tonight. I mean, I mentioned before that it might be useful to to take a site visit and look a little bit closer at the actual property. Um, The one, you know, the, the one additional factor that we haven't mentioned, although you mentioned, um, thank you, which is you know an important part of the analysis that we go through on every project, is the precedential value. And uh, if we sound like we're overreacting to what might seem to be just a minimal incursion into the buffer. Part of what drives that reaction is a concern that the next applicant, who is as industrious as you folks have been in researching precedent, will come in and say when they want to build a pool that encroaches 30 feet into the buffer, well, you approved this project on Hearts Gravel Road, and you didn't take a hard line about pools in the buffer there, so why should you do it to us? Because in this case, so, it was a much smaller encroachment. Well, that's the precedent. That makes everybody's job a lot more difficult. I mean, if, if the precedent, if, you know. John, it's a help, slippery slope. Would it help the board to have them do an alternative that reduces the footprint of the pool and shows what could be placed within the buffer? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that they think they can't do that. Well, I know that, right? but I mean, it, would that assist? Sure. I mean, sure. No, no. I mean, that's, you know, in, 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 situations, in situations like this, this is usually what we would say. I mean, nobody wants to come back and just say no. Um, you know, we would say to the applicant, we would urge you to go back and uh, take another look at the situation and the conditions and the drawings and see uh, how you can come up with something that may not give everybody what they want, may not be the most aesthetically pleasing uh, to the homeowner, 
but would be something that we would be able to defend. Um, Let me ask one question on that, which I, at the moment I don't see that uh, alternative in my head, but we would still have the issue of the rest of the, um, the steps, the steps to the pool and this retaining wall and our driveway improvement all being <coughs> within the buffer. It's the buffer the other way, but a buffer, you know, it is still the buffer. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern about having the client spend a lot of professional time for me to like look at alternatives. If we're just gonna, if you're, if you're, and I think that's why the other architects had that very kind of ridiculous thing where they they brought the steps. See, they're trying to keep the steps outside. Uh, even, even the stair construction. So there's the former steps, right, going up there, and they're trying to keep them out of the buffer in, in this, you know, all the way over here, which is kind of, again so weird with the driveway circulation. It makes a really dangerous and frankly silly circulation just to stay out of that. So that's my issue here, is that I don't see how I can completely stay out of that buffer because a pool. Anything, anything you build down here, you still need to get there from the house, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and because of the grade change, you have to have steps, and those steps. I mean, I mean, I can't even imagine coming off the curb of where people are entering to the garage. I mean, it would be so bizarre how you would have to get down there, and I don't even know if it's physically possible. But um, so that's well, that's our that issue. The sight lines are better that somebody coming at the curb can both see somebody coming out of the garage and down the driveway. Well, there's a great, there's a much greater differential there because the garage keeps coming up. You keep coming up, 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 up here, so this is higher. So it's a, it's a lot of steps and it's just... Even, uh, even it, more of a reason coming, than the line of sight is better at the corner than midway well, down the line driveway. Line of sight for what? Coming out of the garage. If you're coming down at a slope, somebody come out of the garage. Might not see somebody coming down the steps. Farther down the driveway. Well, but, if what you, you say but is, but when you come out of the so garage, you come, you come this way. You you back up and you drive right out. You don't back down the garage. Can, can I ask for a clarification? But anyway, so I just wanted to go back. But before okay, you do that, I just want to clarify that that the 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 only solution that you would consider is one that keeps all hardscape development within this buffer. I don't think we said all. I think we said. As much as can be within the defined wetland. That was the question I was going to ask. So uh, you're saying that we didn't say there's no compromise. We just said this plan doesn't show, or there are plans that show opportunities to meet right. the so, defined boundaries. So the spa could be, if the pool were within this triangle by some miracle, the spa could still be outside of the out in the wetland buffer as long as it's on the other side of the buffer, not this sort of other side. Is that what you're saying? For me personally, no. What I'm saying is anything that's outside of the, the buffer line should be inside as the first attempt. Right. Including whether, a spot. Whether all of it goes in, some of it doesn't get in, I haven't seen enough of an attempt to try to meet what we've tried to achieve by mitigating the problem by keeping within the buffer. But you're, but you're not saying, and, I, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, correct me, that if they came back with something that did have portions of this outside the buffer but maybe mitigated somewhat from what we're proposing now, that would be something that you might consider. Depends on what's outside the buffer. I understand. I understand. Sure. I understand. But, but yeah, I, I, you're not I, saying I, all or not. I will, I will tell you that, that I personally mm -hmm. would look differently at stonework, walkways, walls, retaining walls, etc., outside of the, or encroaching into the buffer than I would the pool itself. And what is that? And, and where does that come from? What? Why? What is the? What is the environmental reason? For I think it's clearly less disturbance. I think it's a. I think it's more of a precedential reason, really, than an environmental reason. I think it's that once we 
allow a pool to be built in the wetland buffer, that dam has been broken, never to be, you know what I mean? And I think that's probably the logic. The schools and stairs have always been part of the solution right. to the entity being built, right. not the entity itself. Right. I also have another question. The, the garage, is that currently used as the garage? Is that where they park their cars yeah. and then they up, walk? Up top, three cars. Okay, and then they and walk, they walk from across. there to the house? Correct. So I'm wondering, what if they access the pool through the garage and they didn't need the steps at all off of the, the driveway there? There, you don't, there is no connection between the inside of the garage and downstairs. It's a completely separate, there are no steps mm. inside. You come, you have to come <clears throat> in these, the, these two entrances. So the demarcation line follows here and then follows here? Correct. Okay. And the grade change, this is what, two steps? Couple right there, it's about three feet. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm three, three steps, sorry. Three, three steps. feet. Couple of feet. 18 inches. Okay. Hey, what's the elevation of your proposed pool versus right. the, uh, the previous? Oh, that's a good, that's a great question. I can, t I can tell you that. So, no, I can't because they didn't provide any grades. I have grades on mine. This is, says nothing. I have no idea. There's some kind of a retaining wall there. Um, so, sort of summarize, I think. Yeah, what I hear the board suggesting is you take a look at another alternative that further reduces you know, the impact within the buffer area and see what you can come up with and balance that with you know, whether it can work for the client and you know, come back and uh, you know, present that. In the meantime, we can set up a site visit you know, for you know, the board to you know, look at the site conditions as well. I guess they should coordinate that through you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you mean it's to go into the site? Uh, yeah, I think that what, well, once we sign that document, I think they can come in with time, basically, right? You can go to the site at any time. Once we, we, uh, well, we sign the, we the document. We wouldn't do it without a ring. We're here. Yeah. So, okay, fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Is it it special, sure? I'm saying, especially since most of, our, for lunch. Most of our business yeah, right. end up being at about 8 o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday yeah. morning. So. Yeah. Is, uh, Renee, is the other applications previous one, has that been staked out in the field? Uh, no. So, uh, would that be used? Yeah. So, so we did stake, we staked out our pool. Ours. Right. I did, I did that. Right, that, yes, that, that, not, the, not the approved one is what you're saying. Would that be useful to see that? Only if, if Renee, what only Renee is trying to show, uh, or just describe, is, is that there's some elements to that that right. it, it, uh, we don't want we don't want to put you and it's hard to tell look, no. I mean well, we're used to looking at two it's dimensions still, it's still mm -hmm. all within the line except for the the stormwater I'm just I guess and do you have the do you have the what the buffer line flagged yes I did most uh, he flagged it and then I measured back <coughs> to get you so that I, I flagged this so you can sort of visualize where it crosses right. Yeah, so, um, so if you can just verify that the stakes are still up for the buffer area, I think that's the most important thing. And then if you do the corners of your proposed pool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, so that that we've done. But if you're not, but, uh, okay. Well, and those would be there when we visit, that's all. That's yeah. what we're asking. I, don't, I, I think they should be there. I did it I did it before what I thought the last meeting was going to be a month ago. Um, so I have to check and see if everything's still up. But but is your your plan though? Even though the, we don't have the elevation on the other side, uh, the other plan. The yes. Your plan has works with the existing topography a little bit better. Oh yeah, the, the other the other That's, thing had retaining walls right. on the low side. So that of the it was pool. it was it was fighting the topography yes. if you will, a little bit more. This is completely a more. If not for the fact that it crosses this line, this is a far more environmentally sensitive plan in terms of construction than what we had shoehorned in here before. And the other thing is, is that if the stairs 
the steps that are coming off the driveway flow a lot easier. That I mean, people will be coming out of the house to go to the pool. They won't be coming out of the garage, right? Th that's correct. I mean, so, yeah, this so is that, how you walk across. You walk that, out the door. You come under, across right. and down. It's totally so, so it's a sensible, it's a sensible location plan. for stair steps. Yes. Sensible. Completely. We can argue whether it's yeah. safer. Mm -hmm. You were talking about sight distance. I just earlier made a comment but, about what I heard. But, but it, it, it's certainly a, a more sensible, uh, all things put aside for that, that Correct. stairs. Correct. And it separates the functions. You know, it's already uh, not ideal that one has to cross the driveway, but at least it separates the and, garage and function back parking. To the right. land, the, the, the way it fits into the topography, they'll be retaining walls with the prior approval that. Anytime you build a structure like that, there's always the potential that it's got to be fixed, repaired, whatever. I mean, that you, you're talking on the, between the pool and, and, and the wetland and Renee's plan. There'll be no hardscape that'll have ever have to be, or structures that'll have to be repaired, fixed, maintained, or whatever. Well, and the infiltrators. So that's an advantage. And the infiltrators won't fill up them because I Infiltrators, have them. and that, that's another thing, uh, you know. It's like wide ties and thin ties. You, the engineers like to push the infiltrators because they're hard structures that go underground. Anytime you put a structure underground, uh, no matter how careful you are, this, the odds are it's going to fill up over time. It's potential. That's a much better, much more elegant solution. It works with the landscape. It doesn't clog up. It looks beautiful. And it also eliminates lawn. So, so that's a big advantage. I, I can't stress that enough. I, I hate to cut this short, but yes. we but, do have a but, long time. But you have to, okay. Yeah. Thank, thanks a lot, though, for your time. Thank you. Um, if, I could, if I could ask, uh, you know, you want to put together a couple of days and see? Oh, sure. Evening. Well, you, could, you could do an evening, you know, because it's like depends, depends on the day. Yeah. <laughs> Chances are better as we're moving to this run during the week and the weekend tonight. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. It's, it's, it's <laughs> so, is, is there anything to summarize in terms of? I mean, we can try for. You know, either the 30th or 1st, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Gauge different. The 30th is better than the first one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. April 30th and May 1st. 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, the 30th doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And then the 1st. And then the 1st. Wednesday the 1st. I could do the first, but David. I could do the first and the second. Yeah. If you, yep. You can pencil it in and try. So we check the first. So the first is possible. That would work for me. Yeah. You're talking about a, a, a the first for a side, side visit. visit. Side visit, yeah. Do you want to pick another date, or are you still going to pass No, let's do that. Mm -hmm. You're saying May 1st at 6.30? Right, so we're, we're planning the site visit for May 1st at 6.30. Okay. Right. All right. And do you know when your next meeting is? The next meeting will be May, May 20th. May 20th. Okay. So that's after your retirement date? Yes. And uh, Sabrina's here because she will be, uh, you know, assisting the board and uh, making sure there's continuation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Stasgow, I'm the architect for the uh, Shakens. Uh, they are not able to be here tonight, but if you want, I can put them on FaceTime and we can contact them in if there's any questions. They said they're available. They just weren't able to be in. They're out of town. Uh, so we had uh, met two months ago, I believe it was, and um, in the meantime, we have um, hired a landscape architect who has uh, done a layout, which Steve has. And that shows some uh, mitigation plantings uh, along the, the wetlands flagged area. And um, from our last discussions, what I've done is I have shown in orange, this is the areas that we're going to be removing. We talked about removing, there's an existing greenhouse on the back of the building we're removing. We're adding an addition over here on this side of the house. We're removing a portion of the driveway and then widening the driveway to get into this. There'll be a new garage bay underneath here and then the turnaround area. And this existing area here was a gravel driveway that linked the uh, three-car garage they built in the rear of the property with the front. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about removing that. Um, so you'll, you'll see in the landscape drawings, too, that that air area planted out in some, some of those areas where the driveway used to be. Put these at the same <laughs> one of the system. Okay. <laughs> so here's the turnaround, here's the addition coming out with the bay. Oh, that's, 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 there we go. There we go. Um, and so this is where the existing gravel, gravel driveway was, which runs right through this these wetland fl flagged area so that the planted there. Um, is it I'm sorry, just remind me again what we're doing over here. Oh, this, this is, is the addition of This is an addition to the house. Um, that'll allow us the square footage to uh, to make the house a little bit bigger. There's um, this portion of the house from this portion here through the addition will be two stories. This we're going to leave as one story with the existing roof. We'll just, you know, resurface it. Um, so we're not going to build on top of that. We're just going to build on top of this portion and this portion. Okay, no. So the scope has been reduced. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, originally, we were originally thinking of building over the whole house, but we're, we're trying to reduce that. Right. But the, you want to go straight to the uh, There's a chart on there. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So on on my on my site plan. Because the board had asked last time. Yes. Yeah. Either. So on my site plan, the the new driveway portion here, which is shown right here with the turnaround, it is 586 square feet. The new addition is 527 square feet. The removed driveway here in the front where we're narrowing it along the existing walkway and retaining wall, that's 287 square feet we're taking out. Uh, the removed greenhouse is 353 square feet that we're taking out. And the removed gravel driveway is 2,781 square feet that we're taking out. So if we look at what the footprint that we're adding, which is the addition and the driveway, that's uh, 1,113 square feet. And then what we're removing is which, what's in orange is a total of 3421. So if we take what we've added from what we've um, taken away, we have a subtraction of 2308. A net reduction. Yeah, net reduction of 2308. And that's if you give, if you equate the gravel driveway. Correct. 
with right. the real hardscape. Right. From what we had talked about last time, right. that was a request to remove right. the driveway. Right. Right. And, uh, I just want right. to make sure that yes. that we know the numbers are mm -hmm. done. Yep. Keeping it apples and apples. And you're removing that greenhouse, and you were removing the greenhouse last time too. Right? Correct. Correct. And we have a small deck here that's going partially over where that greenhouse was, and on the side here. It's being built on piers. Yeah, just like a normal, like a normal yeah. deck. It's raised up at the first floor level of the house. And I met with the landscape architect uh, today, yeah, and that's why we just have the plans. But what we had asked them to consider is putting some type of barrier, either plantings or you know fencing, which we often do along the hundred foot you know line. In this case, it's the actual wetland boundary. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. But you know, which what they decided to do is a dense planting of native uh, plantings and islands that'll create you know, the line and fill in and then, uh, you know, still provide some access to the pond. Right, give yeah, a little bit of a visual barrier, but also give it a visual interest as well yeah. to make the pond be more... One of the thoughts with talking with the landscape architect today was to uh, maybe also consider uh, putting a note on that to, for the, you know, the remaining buffer, you know, the remaining wetland area here, is just stop mowing the grass, no, create, no, 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 create no, no. some paths, and then you know, create some designated paths, you know, walking path, you know, so that they can have access. But let their let this be a no mow area, so that the lawn over time will right. you know, revert back. And right. so, so I think that's one of the changes we would just want to see on the yeah. That would be nice. That'll come, happen right along the whole boundary there. Right, and then yeah. it would become all you know, one you know more functioning buffer at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. you know? Put something like a strip in here and a strip around. Yeah, something to yeah, a little walking them, path area. Yeah, yeah. access and you know, enough area for enjoyment of it. I don't know. Did we also have a discussion about um, picking up the uh, the roof water? Yeah, um, we had asked for stormwater. Right, and um, I don't know if Mike Klein has spoken to you about that. Yeah, I spoke with the engineer, uh, Tony Pizzari, and they uh, looked to see what they could do. And because the groundwater is so high, they haven't been able to figure out a practice that works. Uh, even a rain garden, they don't have the separation distance between the you know, water table and the you know, the soil, and same thing with infiltrators would, would not work, and what he was recommending is very conventional, using roof cutters with splash pads and level spreaders, and, mm -hmm. you know, just because there's, you know, the water table is just so high, you know. I mean, today's standards just would not be, you know, we wouldn't see a house in, in this area, you know, because it was entirely wetland. approach Seems consistent with what we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, any water off the driveway, does it, so it, it just sheets off it just onto the grass? sheets off to the lawn and then yeah. I guess, so there's no, I mean, maybe one there's no saving, be, there's no block, at least a, like a there's no block, 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 yeah, at least a basin to pick up silt or yeah. salt or, yeah. yeah, could could you look at doing like a French drain you know, with along a, the edge of the driveway? With a you know, so that it could trap any sediments or anything. Like like a, gra a gravel uh, French drain along the edge of the, so that yeah. anything that without a Belgian block curb, just let everything run into that and then. Yeah. And okay. Then, and then, it depends on how you pitch it. Right. Whether you would have it, you know, yeah, pitch into one location. Yeah. I mean, we we would want want to pitch away from the, the garage, so it would probably be pitching towards this area. So some sort of sump here. Okay. Yeah, that would keep the water from going back out to the street and keep the water from going in towards the house. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's a low tech, mm -hmm. but it would be yeah. effective at trapping the sediments and and, 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 and clean it out. And we can we can talk to the engineer. Maybe that maybe we could do sort of a 
makeshift main card in there or something that, you know, I don't know what the, create a little bit of a basin there with the, with the plantings that will help absorb the water as opposed to just yeah, having a gravel bed. Because yeah. I, think. I think that actually could be a nice planted yeah, yeah. area there, sure. you know, that would be Absolutely. more appealing than a gravel bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since the water table is so high anyway, I don't think we're going to be able to put anything underground there to take the water, so maybe, you know, maybe create something that's of interest landscape-wise and that can help us. in the area that's roadway that's the gravel is just being picked up yeah we can i mean we can just scrape up and we can scrape up and, whatever we can off the top and then we can spread additional topsoil to put the lawn back in the areas that will be lawn and topsoil for the plantings right so yeah. it looks like you're kind of coming around here anyway. right right yeah. yeah so i mean is that acceptable to put a little more topsoil there too so that everything can grow yeah. properly yeah, yeah. yeah. sure because I don't think we'll be able to scrape no. whatever, you know, but the top surface of the gravel probably. Have you guys been able to go out to see the site? No, no I'm not sure of either. You, you I don't guys know if it was like necessary. Okay. Yeah. They weren't as concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And around the pond edge. Yeah, she's got a nice planted area around that's the pond. That's what you, you think is the right thing. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, because they're doing, you know, I think it's higher than two to one, you know, ratio of mitigation. So. Mm -hmm. Best applied back here as opposed to. Yeah. I think so. And then if we do a no mow. Yeah, it really helps because this yeah. this forms the yeah. the barrier, right? Yeah. And I think it creates a nice visual interest to the to the yard as opposed to like just a fence kind of just zigzagging through the yard, which would yeah. unless it was planted nicely, it might look odd. Yeah, it would look kind of awkward. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. So I'm comfortable with the recommendations. Yes, I think we are. So I think if you just want to revise, you know. The, or show if you can on your plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the few changes we've talked about. Okay, the, the area for the drainage for the driveway, and then, uh, and then uh, I'll yeah, have the landscape you know, architect call out the no mow zone. Yeah. Okay. And if she could, you know, create approximate paths. I mean, okay, they can be, you know, subject to the owner's, you know, discretion on where they want to put it. But you know, maybe like a, you know, six or eight foot, you know, walking path. This area is pretty, it's not that large of an area. Right, right. Okay. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have a copy of this plan, Steve? Did the client give it to you? I have uh, the one that Ryan gave me. Oh, okay. I, here's yeah. here's uh, three clean copies of this okay. without any markings on it. Okay. And then, so no need for a site visit? Don't know? think so. Okay. So uh, then the next meeting is scheduled for May 20th. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, whenever you get the revisions on it. Okay, we'll get them into you. Okay, great. And then at that point, would you guys feel comfortable to uh, approving it at that point? Yeah, I, I, Likely, yeah. I okay, it's just nice. as yeah. every ask my, my final one. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you for your help. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, sure, thank you. So just John, if I talk with you guys, is because we've got Paul waiting over there. He's, he's for application number four, which is bird off. Okay. So I'll handle that one next. Sure. Sure. Let him get out of here. <laughs> okay, no one, have no one's waiting. Pardon me? Are there someone waiting for him? For me? Or? No. No, oh, there's okay. no one here for that one. <laughs> Um, so, this is a uh, property located at 24 Trails End, 
It is an existing single family residence. It is this property right here. We've been there. Uh, you have been there? Okay. I, I don't know the history. I really just started <laughs> working on that. We've been there more than once. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, there, there's no physical improvements as part of this application. This is, um, you know, the, the, the owner of the house coming, uh, you know, going before the planning board to help, uh, you know, get some uh, things memorialized and, and approved based on uh, there's a, a maximum building coverage and the maximum land development coverage that uh, they are exceeding at this point. They're just trying to legalize everything on the site for improvements that have happened. So they can sell the house probably. <laughs> Whatever the reason, you know, being, yep. yeah, I'm sure yep. that, that, you know, there's mm -hmm. no secret there. So, so basically this plan, um, the, the last wetland permit I think that was granted on this site was about 10 years ago in 2009, and that was for some uh, Work these over things, here is, yeah. So, so this, this over here, as I remember, wasn't yeah. It? So, basically, um, the pink is things, and as well as the blue, that were things approved in the 2009. Yeah, if you recall, he had proposed a bridge across the island. I remember that they never built it, really. Yeah, so that's so that's why the blue is are things that were approved in 2009, but that they did not install, mm -hmm. and then. The pink is things that were approved in 2009, or that were on the plan that that was approved, and then the yellow are additional things that were not on the plan, but that we found through research and aerial photographs that and, and site visits that were put in after the fact that were not on the 2009 plan. So, in doing so, you know that these stone step. They're, they're, they're not mortar or anything, they're just dry laid, if you recall them from, from your thing. They, they worked with the existing okay. grades. There's really wasn't any grading done in the area. They just kind of did some landscaping and, and made it more passive. Pass. Yeah, it, it, they really are. They did not, there was supposed to be stepping stones that connect to this. There's like a grist mill bench kind of thing over here uh, that they did put in, but they didn't. Put the connection here. These are steps that go up a slope mm -hmm. um, that that go to another set. This is this is the back of the, house. the the back of the front of the the house. Yeah, this is the driveway coming up, and there's a turnaround here. So all these steps go back to to the house and, and whatnot. This is that wooden uh, bridge that Steve was mm -hmm. was alluding to that they did not do, uh, and they they put some stuff here as well. So basically, what was submitted under the first application or, or was a, um, a mitigation plan and we did a net increase in the, what, which was basically the yellow and, and the blue so they didn't put the blue in but they put the yellow in so there was a net increase of 300 square feet of rocks that they put on the, on the site so there was a mitigation uh, area that um, was proposed that is in this area and that's just you know detailed on the next plan and, so I guess the reasoning behind this was was to have more of a defined area than to spread out uh, you know something along there this is a stone wall that's dry laid that that follows the basically the outline of the water line and it was just thought that maybe if we had stretched out this mitigation plan that over the years maybe it wouldn't be seen as a pocket of well mitigation that maybe it would get we lack, you know, who knows what happens after mm -hmm. people don't don't live there for yeah, so. the planning, planning board on the sidewalk and that was one of the questions they asked to, for your input on is whether yeah you know to spread spread out the mitigation along you know the pine edge even though there's a stone wall you know a hard stone wall along the edge. And then the second thing which is harder to see but as the property slopes up, they had uh, planted years ago a lot of pachysandra, and you know the majority of the slope is covered with pachysandra, but there's one area yeah. that's bare in between. And you know one of the recommendations was to see if you, you know if you guys felt that it would be better to plant that, you know, because pachysandra is there, leave it because it's a good. Effective, it's pretty well established. Good We've all seen you know, it. Yeah. Fil filter is fill in the rest of it either with native ferns or you know add more pachysandra just to you know, provide more yeah. coverage it's in the buffer so and i went there i took some pictures of that area I took, um, 
it's coming in with moss, and I spoke to the homeowners about that. They, you know, homeowners can be a little bit hard to push in one direction or to get get their feedback. You know, they they like the moss look, if that makes sense. They they like the you know a different look as as com compared to all that. It, you know, it, it is a rocky area. Like we went out there, so. Um, So anyway, so here is looking at the the pond area, and this is looking at this is that hillside area where. And I was just out there. I, I just mm -hmm. took this picture last week. So when we were out there, it was kind of yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. It looked really barren, <laughs> but but this is coming in a little bit more with with the moss look. Um, these are those stairs coming down from the other plan. These are those other stepping stones. Uh, and then these are these are basically walking toward the chosen mitigation area, and we thought that it just looked like a right place. You know, it's kind of like you know, it's got what surface is this, soil exposed. What is it now? Uh, is that grass trying to grow there, or yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah uh, I, it's mostly grass. You know. I don't know what their maintenance schedule is on on that area, but this is probably one of the flattest areas on their property so they like to go down there you know who knows if they have family over they do the beanbag talk you know what whatever it may be but i think that this is one of their more passive areas that they that they use because there are some terraced areas and, and some slopes on the property yeah from my perspective when i went out there I, I i'm not convinced that planting along the stone wall would really help with any filtration All right. Yeah, because the sun the well, everything very, goes very, this very, way, so this is kind of walking closer toward this end point. And I was just trying to show that it seems to be that this is where the water kind of goes mm -hmm. in, in storms, and then it goes into the, the area that leads into the, the pond along, along the pond. So that area is right here, and it just, you know, everything comes down from this site into this area and then it comes into here. So it just seemed like a lot of a place to, mm -hmm. to put the mitigation plan. The, the purpose of all of this is to get some mitigation uh, to the other things. We were just trying to show this. How did the whole, but how did the whole the thing answer? arise? Well, what happened is years ago, the planning board always approved projects with a clearing and grading limit line. And you know, so any projects that you know, come back when someone is proposing, there's usually <coughs> encroachments within those areas. And so that triggers a need to come back to the planning board. So the improvements yeah. that they did with the stone wall right. steps and the little, uh, you know, you know, little fire pit, yeah. those, the, yeah, that within. was within that prior grading. And how long ago did they do that? Uh, so the house was built in 1990. Well, no, 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 no. Some, somehow between. So what triggered? I'm just thinking. What triggered the current they, application? They can't, they, the they're trying to correct the violation. Yeah, they, they're. they're it, was no it was self. Yeah. No, nobody. It was no violation. They just came forward. The property forward and, owner yeah. is trying to cure all violations on the property. With the future. So what did they? They hired somebody to come in and say. Yeah. Are we in compliance? Well, they actually had the, the, there, there's much more egregious issues on the property than the wetland disturbance. Yeah, there's, there was, there's, there's, there's coverage there's issues. There's buildings built in yeah. second floor buildings with second floor additions and whatnot within zoning setbacks. Yeah, so there's... And so how, again, did somebody... So the planning board asked them to identify all of the areas on the property that okay, I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I hate to be dense, but how did it... How did it, trigger, how did it trigger the planning board's they, notice? They, they actually came, they came to, to us. us. Yeah. They, they Saying, well, we know we've been bad, yeah. or... Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. They, yeah. they wanted to cure the errors on the property because they probably want to sell it. And right now, they're over coverage limitations and within zoning setbacks. So any new so property CFO owner... doesn't cover the correct. building right. that they have. I mean, do we know, for instance... They, did they, they no, they the have point, a CFO. Did they get to the point where they were trying to sell it and, uh, and, a, no potential, idea. and a potential purchaser? I don't even think it's for sale now. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, There's it's been not. no discussion. Again, it's, I think yeah. it's just... They realized that they were out of compliance and they needed it. They have CFOs. It's existing today as is. Yes. The attorney came yeah. to us and said, we have a problem. How do we fix it? Uh -huh. 
Right. And so they came to and made application to the planning board. The activity in the rear of this property is very similar to a, to the neighboring property where they exceeded the clearing and grading limit line. And the planning board asked them to identify all those areas that were not approved by permit mm -hmm. and refer them to you. To what the did we do with the neighboring The property? rock wall and the spacing for the... They, the um, they did through. mitigation. Yep, that was Again, the, this type of disturbance is not... Um, no, it's the stepping stone paths. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, right. Yeah. right. Right. Yeah. And what, I mean, to give, give you an idea of the length that this applicant has gone through, they purchased a, you know, a four acre piece. You know, adjacent to them, and then they're doing yeah, a land swap with part one of the, the other adjacent landowners land land yeah. to get everything to work. So from a number standpoint, the building so they can coverage the, limits. The numbers, yeah. yeah. Wow. Get yeah. back to into it's it. It's crazy. I guess. So, yeah. So they're you know they're, they're, they're this site will probably not have anything. So these issues are the, you know, the yeah. least of it. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> you know I, I, I would have normally. <laughs> <laughs> said I didn't think your guys needed an input on it, but because it right. was only 300 square feet and it was stepping stones. Right, and, right. You know, yeah, we had a sidewalk out there. I have to tell you, that's, I mean, that's my initial reaction. Yeah. yeah. Why are we seeing right. this? Yeah, why are we seeing this? Well, you're, you're seeing it because the planning board was having difficulty swallowing the fact that the property or purchased a four acre property made the numbers work. So I think they wanted to get your feelings on the encroachment into the wetlands. Uh, you know, based on a couple of questions that I was asked to refer to you, yeah. do you feel that the mitigation planting in an isolated location where Paul has shown it is acceptable, or would you rather see it? I think the there? amount that you would have to do along the rest of the perimeter to make it meaningful would probably be more than... 300 feet. <laughs> Is that the right square footage to yes. throw right. whatever? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. So. Clumping is good. Clumping is fine. It's better than <laughs> stretching it out. <laughs> and then the second question would be, do you want to see the bare area that is in between the Pakistan and the Moss? The Moss area. Area. area covered with Pakistan. See, that, see more of the... the is there exposed. concern about the runoff? Well, I think... Yeah, would the Moss... I think the Moss Actors. helps. It, it's not as effective as the Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more... But it's rocky, so it's not yeah, necessarily... It's, it's they have to report a significant amount of topsoil. Yeah, that's going to end up yeah. in the wetland anyway. I mean, the potential is there for runoff if we got heavy rains and the rain hit the... So you'd have to right. import significant topsoil just to plant Pachysandra well, in there? Yeah, yeah, I think you'd end up... It's, 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 we we never want to import it's very rocky. Onto a, yeah. right, into a buffer zone. Well, for is, is, is the Pachysandra blocked with landscaping material or something? Because doesn't Pachysandra just spread... Well, well, it looks like it's, it spreads it looks like very it's blocked where it down has at the roots. bottom. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the fact that it's not spreading. Into will that it area spread up into that area? <laughs> that was kind of my feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Will go if I wanted to be well, there, it would have been there already. Right. Right. Yeah, so I, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's very good in shady yeah. areas. You know, it's it's an understory shrub. Although not native, no, it's not ideal. Doesn't go through rocks. Too shady for ferns and other things to grow. So yeah, I I don't I wouldn't disturb it. I thought it's illegal to one. Right, leave it alone. Yeah, it makes it easy. Yeah, that's you know we just wanted to to talk talk it through. So yeah, make sure you had your two cents. Yeah, I mean, if, there's, if there's a concern about runoff, I would I would deal with it a different way, right? Like, yeah. you know, well, that, well, that's another that. part of the application yeah. where the the applicant is actually I think all of the impervious area that that mm -hmm. really was yeah. introduced after the original 1990 building mm -hmm. um, is being treated outside of the wetland buffer, but it is it is being treated in uh, front of the house. We did soil testing. There's a stormwater management report prepared, so we're doing it up here um, with a system of underground infiltration uh, chambers that that will take and, and you know detain and infiltrate. I think they're you know they got a decent perk rate up there, so it is elevated. So um, that will be part of the application, but you know you don't see any detail with that, so it's not in the wetland buffer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. our preparing memo. I'll go back to planning board. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a nice night. Thank you too. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Nice to put a face to the name. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, we're behind behind emails these days. I know, right? <laughs> The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> the end is in sight, right? Yeah. Here's a cerebral application on the forty seven eighty one. Yep, yep. Yeah. And it's a revised and reduced uh pond budget application and last time yeah, we had asked them to add a few details and notes on the plan and they, they've done that and uh, I just thought it would be for your benefit to take a look at it. But, uh, what we had asked them for last time was uh, to designate no mo zones and because of the you know extensive amount of lawn and then a grass creed or grass paver access drive has been shown you know, for the uh, where they're doing the uh, equipment yeah. to access mm -hmm. the four bay area. And then we added it and asked them to, you know, label the existing swale to the new four bay area and it'll be cleaned out. And then a note regarding just the grass seed mix, it should be a combination of perennial and, and annual. So just minor, you know, details. I mean the emergency spill spillway. This is picking up everything coming down this way. I feel the, the top of your yeah. Yeah. So it's going this way. It's right? going, it's going, this, it's going way. this way. No. Like yeah. if this is five oh, third. Third. I mean it comes this way and then it comes this way as well. I mean it not this is up hard. this is up very a bit. bit. Drainage is this way too. So this would go this way, right? That's what I'm trying to do. This is a base. Yeah, line. this is 570, this is 550, this is 530. It goes yeah. like this. So, so it drains in both ways because there's the, you know, the existing wetland over here and above that same contour, right? 530 or so. That, that'll be dug in and the side slip will be reinforced, you know, to used for the you know, decanting basin you know, during the you know, dredging operation. And then this will remain at this little... What they, what they usually do is a lot of deep water and then it'll be backfilled over. Okay. You know, with topsoil and then... You know, is, that, is that stated here? Yeah, I think that's in the details. From the, uh, which, uh, That's right, I didn't, I was just, does it stay or does it go? Yeah, I'm not sure that it's fine. Yeah, that would be, I don't know if have that detail on that bus plan. Decant basin, required capacity, see notes, section three or four, section three or four. Decant basin, yeah. Okay. So this would be the... Yeah, this, right. Yeah, this so is the berm that you know, contains So is it a, somewhere it should say that? Yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure it was in the notes, but we can find. 
So we store existing, yeah, existing grade. Existing grade, and then is there a planting plan that has to go yeah, with that? With that grass? area was just a, you know, it's existing grass. So we're just going to have them put it back to that. Yeah. That they do have. I mean, this last note here was the, you know, grass seed mix to match yeah. the existing lawn area. Yeah, I don't see anything of restoration of that the basin. Yeah, I mean they haven't. You know, they added this note. You know, just that the grass seed mix. A perennial rye and bluegrass to match the existing lawn for the reestablishment of the decant basin. You know, so that, that's what we had. They should just put mm -hmm. restore existing. Great. Yeah. So that stays. Interesting approach with the, yeah. you know, this type of dredging system you know, that you've participated with Wicklow. You know, it's very similar. You know, instead of using the big bladders, you know, they're using a, a basin area. When they did it the first time, that was the original one where they pumped it up and yeah. they filled in the basin. Yeah. Yeah. I would think that's a better, Which? an easier way to go with the basin than. Yeah, and bladders and yeah. I mean, the bladders you need a big flat area, and it, yeah. And all that I mean, it's, watering. Yeah, it yeah. just keeps yeah growing yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, it worked fairly well, I think, on you know the whipper one. You know, they, they had the space that they could use, and they you know, spread out, and then they were able to you know ex you know, remove it pretty easily. Um, I think a lot of neighbors took it, right? A lot of people were interested in that. Yeah, that was before my time there. Oh, was it? That, that, the, 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 no, the, the second, bladders. The second one of the bladders. Oh, the second one? Yeah. Did the neighbors take it? Yeah. Yes, they did. They did I think a lot some. of people were asking because there's nice, rich, organic. That's yeah, right. So, yeah. Okay. So, any other thoughts? Are you okay with the changes? Okay, right, I'll go ahead and uh, you know, prepare the letter and permit for this application. Do you want to vote on it? I guess we should officially. It's good to us. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor, aye. Aye. Second. Sabrina, you're going to learn you do things a little bit more informally around here. You know what? <laughs> the fact that you guys actually open up the plans and discuss what's in front of you instead of what you think it should be is a great improvement. No, no, don't get me wrong. I love the planning board. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but I'm also here to make sure that the new staff person can serve you to the best of their ability, but meet your needs. Yep. I mean, this is a very different board in the sense that, you know, I know how to read plans and elevations. <coughs> Steve knows how to read plans and elevations. When we're looking at a new hire, it's critical that they know how to read plans and elevations sure. to explain it to you, you know, to understand that's what, what we got David for. David knows how to read plans and elevations. Well, right, right. Sometimes. But to be of real assistance to you, you know, as you go through things. And it's not going to be easy to replace Steve. You think? It's not going to happen. No. It will, we, we will get a body. Yeah. I, my, my goal is to get a qualified body. Mm -hmm. the so this is another referral from the planning board. Uh -huh. and it's called Homeland Towers. We're going to put a cell tower in Millwood. Uh, Millwood, huh? It's on the water treatment facility property. Mm -hmm. It's owned by the town. Right. And they've been in front of the town board for quite a long time, uh, looking at different sites within Millwood, and they, you know, selected this one. It was a this was a second site. Uh, the first one they had was in the same general location, but much higher up on a plateau. And when they asked to do a site inspection, we went up there and there was a beautiful vernal pool wetland right where they wanted to put the tower mm. and to uh, get up there. Bummer. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it a short conversation. Yeah, it ended up being a very short conversation yeah. and 
in addition to get up there, it would have been like a one on two road access mm -hmm. and would have created a lot of disturbance. So is this going to have so, to be a so taller this tower? A second. Uh -huh. And because so of that, need a variance. because mm -hmm. of this, they have to, this site is much lower, so they need to have a higher okay. you know, height to the tower. Yeah. They'll need a variance for the height from the CBA. Right. Not our problem. So Not your problem. Yeah. And, nope. and, and right now, the planning board is reviewing this and saying, what else did you look at? Yeah. So, so based on the wetland condition, we have uh, you know a state wetland in this area. You know, so the state has come out and uh, I met with them and confirmed the boundary. You know of it, but uh, the disturbance, the, the proposed, it's where it's located. They're proposing about fifty percent of the footprint for the building, for the tower, is within the wetland buffer. Here's the, here's the hundred foot line here. And the wetland boundary is up on the top of the page. You know, so that you know the you know the entire building. You know, you know, so that entire building and you know the access drive is just outside of the buffer and you know, but that the, is the water treatment plant. That and the water treatment plant would be is over here. Oh, so this is the building. This the is the, the this the is proposed. the equipment the compound. Yeah. This is the tower. I see. And the then here's the equipment cabinets. So the whole proposed building is within the buffer. Right. And, right. Water, and another thing that's being proposed for the future is the town is going to put a salt shed right in that circular area. Yeah. An additional one? Are they moving the one they from the... No, uh, they create a new one on the Millwood side, side of town to mm -hmm. provide better access and all that. And that's part of it. the encouragement of using this site is the town gets the benefit. You know, the, you know, they're going to construct the road access, you know, to where the future salt, you know, storage area would be. Mm -hmm. You know, based on review, I mean, we've got a lot of buffer disturbance. And the challenge on this site, which is, if you, do you guys remember the Millwood substation at all, that project? Mm -hmm. so where, you know, they were the fixing... Con Ed? Yeah, for Con Ed. Yeah. As years ago, we didn't really feel it made sense to put To put on-site mitigation, so we yeah, did it so at we did Gedney. Gedney. Right. I think this site kind of is a similar situation. That was the first and thing I thought of. When you look at the Wecken condition, it's, it's a pretty mature tree canopy, so it's pretty shaded and, and pretty dense. And so to try to you know, add mitigation in there is not going to be easy, first of all. And there's no set line. And the question whether it, it's, you know, it's, whether it would be effective or functionally, but also it's in the middle of an area where you know, it's not going to benefit any people either. Right. You know, and so my thought was to recommend, which I did to the planning board, you know, to uh, consider offsite mitigation using Gedney. You know, yep. do the you know similar thing is based on the square footage of disturbance. That would seem to you make know, sense. Come up with do we the, have plant things that you know, we want they to do? Yeah, the plant mm -hmm. things. Are, I recommended the condition of like an aerator, because yeah, they mm -hmm. have I think four in that one. They could use another one in this section. In the maybe. Pond? Yeah, and then some partial dredging and. And some land, you know, landscaping buffer mitigation mm -hmm. as possibilities. You know, does, for it, that. does the tower require a generator as part of it? You I gotta, believe so. I think there's a generator. It's a requirement plan. for yeah. each <coughs> each carrier to have a generator. Yeah. Okay. So there's gonna be a little tank yeah. farm. Yeah. And a lot of times, this. a lot of yes. times they have. Like That's all area. within the compound. Yeah. Okay. So there's like two spots per carrier. They have two carriers already proposed to be on the tower, and I think there's room for two more. And you know, a similar situation occurs with the, you know, even though it's not your total pre preview, but it's in the buffer, is, you know, the amount of tree removal. You know, they're, they're planned, so it's pretty extensive tree removal, but they have a lot of trees identified that doesn't necessarily make sense that they have to come out. You know, they could use some other tree production measures you know, to minimize that. But even with that, they're, they're still looking at, you know, quite a bit of tree removal. And the, the same situation, I think, applies that where they can, they could maybe put a few trees, but it's because of the maturity of the, you know, the canopy around it, it probably makes sense not to try to put a lot of trees back in this area as well. You know, and so what I recommended to the planning board with that, too, is they if they consider a tree bank fund, which in this case, based on what they presented, um, I think it came to like $20,000. And what I was recommended is to 
suggest that it be used in Millwood you know, instead of you know throughout the town is have it be earmarked for you know other That's you know, projects. Yeah. 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 Smart politically. Because mm -hmm. the Millwood people are going to be upset by the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that something that we can do? We can earmark well, to I, that I funds? You can recommend or, earmark, yeah. earmarking yeah. it, and ultimately I think it would be the town board who would accept the okay. payment, would then officially earmark it. Yeah, and, and I, I think because we did Con Edison and the Millwood Firehouse with mitigation, you know, there's a precedent for doing off-site yep. you know, mitigation. In this specific we, area. Yeah. Right. That would make sense. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's scheduled uh, for tomorrow night in front of the... Their application is currently incomplete, yeah. though. Yeah, they haven't satisfied all the submission yeah. requirements, both from um, a radio frequency standpoint and a visual assessment standpoint. Stormwater, Steve has additional things they need to yeah. comply with for wetlands. And you know, so with all those, you know, and plus, I, it's the first time the planning board or second time the planning board is going to see it with that with detail. So they may have additional comments yeah. and concerns. They may not like the the extra tree cutting for the salt storage tank. Yeah. And yeah. That's not even factored in my review. No, no I know. So who is it? Who's the applicant here? The town. Homeland Towers. No, the, the Homeland Towers has a lease agreement. Uh, with the town of Newcastle. The board's reviews are separate and apart from that lease agreement. The applicant needs to show their due diligence on due diligence. Okay, I, I was just wondering why, why the salt shed would have come into the well, equation at all. The, this, if the, salt this is a the, the salt shed really ha isn't part of the application, but it is because in the lease agreement they made commitments to clean the area and provide access oh, to the oh, driveway. Oh, 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 so that the town doesn't have to do it themselves. Yeah. Correct. Right. The biggest thing is the access drive. Mm -hmm. and right. I'm sure that was part of their lease discussion, right. to which we don't have details on. But but there's there's a couple of concerns, you know, with the adequacy of the information they provided to the town. You know, the the visual consultant's memorandum came in this evening, and he said that there did, he did not think there would be any visual impact, but they're not representing things accurately in their submission information. No visual impact. The Based tower? on its location, and it's potent. Yeah, it's possible because of where it's located and it's 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 given the height. I mean, but given the height, you're not going to see it because of the density of the trees close up, and in the background, where all of the populated areas through their visual analysis, you're not really you see a, you see the top of the tower right. far away. This is one of those tree pole you know, fake tree no, looking. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they haven't, haven't provided any information. What the radons look like. They yeah, have not yeah, provided yeah. any information regarding what it will look like, whether or not they're incorporating any stealthing or camouflaging. That's all the information, that type of information they have yet to provide. Really? Yes. Except for our because, because Because they, they made assumptions since the town, they're helping the town with the road and the salt shed. The salt shed that they that would be enough? Exactly. <laughs> and but the planning board wasn't part of those discussions. You guys weren't part of those discussions. Right. I mean, I think the camouflage and other things they should they provide an alternative. You know, mm -hmm. Sure. You know, to at least see if that helps. Sure. Really. Right. But again, that's not that's not us. That's really not you know for right. the wetlands. Right. Right. For us, it's it's about yeah, the tower it's that's more about the planning for the right. and Yeah, the tower could affect it. you know nesting birds potentially and that kind of thing. But yeah. It's something I'd look at. Or wetland dependent species, you know, yeah. could be impacted. Yeah. Yeah. So in a way that you know, mm -hmm. comment on that. We did it on top of the full time square. Is it? Yep. You had to wear tin foil on our ears. <laughs> we had our RF training. I look at that every day. It was actually pretty cool. We're right across the street. I did an exercise with a bunch of um, second graders. It was very interesting when I put the cell tower on the plan. Those that were very in tune with technology said, I'm living right next to that. Because <laughs> they want a good cell service. Yep. <laughs> they want a good service. <laughs> That's too funny.
You notice it's only AT and T Mobile. Verizon mm -hmm. isn't signed on. Verizon property probably already has coverage in the area. You think? Well, that's one of the questions. You know, what is the coverage at the lower levels of this tower? If you need a variance to go up that high, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's going to get service? They, they identify municipal service. You know, is that the fire and the EMS? <laughs> this is still a long way from done. Well, not mm -hmm. that long way because the FCC has put time frames on us. Mm -hmm. So. There's a there's a clock. They have the it's 150 days that have to toll, and then they are automatically approved. And so part of part of the missing information is calling the application not complete so that we can so stay the time So it doesn't it tolls it. Right. Yeah. It's like a series of newer applications. Mm -hmm. In their public documents, did they do any type of coverage of where the radio frequency spans are? And, there is an RF heard. report. It was reviewed by the uh, radio frequency engineer okay. and um, incomplete. He needs more propagation maps. They only select, select information was provided. I mean, there's not a big population center nearby, so that's but like whatever it might be well, at the there, There's a neighborhood up the hill. You, you know, there, there are houses around there. Oh, like Inningwood and... Mm -hmm. right, there's right. any interference with the state depot mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. and oh, so this is the go. overall map? Pardon me? That's, yeah, that's a topography survey, so it just shows the whole property. Where it's they, next to Con Edison. Where are they planning on doing it? It's where where your map. finger is. Yeah. Right here? Yep. So this is Campfire. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then, That's yeah. the part of Campfire that runs parallel to yeah. Taconic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where would, um, what's it, Station Place, 133? Mm -hmm. Where's that? That's going to be on the other side. Oh. Over here. Yeah, this is the uh, um, where the water plant is, you know, down here. So, station place would actually be down here further, right? Um, mm -hmm. I thought station station place is kind of if this is if this is yeah. Um, yeah, the water right. treatment plant. Yeah, and the station place is over there. And here's the treatment plant. So you're the station place. Yeah. Right well, this is north, so no, actually this way. Over here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to the north side. Yeah. Mm, so, right. mm -hmm. any other thoughts besides what I provided for my nope. concerns? Or? No. Okay. Are there concerns about nesting birds and other species being impacted by the? I mean, there. It's it's something that a lot of times for federal projects, you know, they do require that you know, special concern or threatened or endangered, you know, surveys be done just to make sure there's no nesting within the project area. And that's for the, the tower itself or the, the wetland disturbance yeah, down at the ground level? Both. It's a disturbance with the potential tower for Do we make them do it? No, we haven't. No, no, we should. We should? Yeah. 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 So you guys think that's a good idea? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think so. It's a good question. Yeah. I'd feel better about the project if I knew that it wasn't going to have some yeah. kind of horrible effect on, you know. Someone's going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone's going to have to explain to Victoria what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put a nest halfway up on it? Oh, so here's the, okay, this is what oh, I was looking yeah. for. The overall huh. area yeah. map. Yeah. That so this is the Taconic. This is the ramp. That's mm -hmm. uh -huh. that's the same shape. Hines Bridge Road. What is this? I think that's, that's a demapped street or something. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I think that's an old name for. Um, There's nothing here. Yeah, that's the same thing. Is it a continuation on? Uh, 
on Station Road in the back. I'm not sure why right? it's called Pines Ridge. Yeah, I don't know why. Is this actually the this entrance? This is the parking lot, right? Is this mm -hmm. the parking lot and yes. the entrance right. to the water so treatment plant? That's, isn't yeah. that the trailway? The trailway no. comes back along yeah. here, yeah. right? And yeah. it comes this way. Yeah. This is the parking lot. Yeah. This is the parking lot. And this, and is, this is probably an old fire road. Yeah. yeah. Is this the map? Yeah, that that's not the water there treatment now. Plant? Right where here? your pen is. Yeah. Right. Isn't that? Isn't this? Then the water go up that plant? way. See where that? Right, right there at the end. That's the water treatment plant. Where this? Right there. Yes. Oh, in here. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so this is where the tower is going to go. Yes, they're yeah. going to extend that driveway that's gotcha. at the water treatment plant up to the area of the tower. Oh, now this is the driveway to the water treatment plant that comes yeah. down yeah. off Campfire. Yeah. 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 So you, yeah. I still think of this as the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> this is the off ramp from the Taconic. This isn't really Campfire. You, know? you just have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? 